Hi guys, welcome to Lunch Guide. I'm your host and chef, Shina Amarium. Today we're going to be making a carrot apple ginger soup. Thank you so much for tuning in. And yes, you heard me right, carrot apple ginger soup. That is, as the name suggests, exactly what we're going to be using in the ingredients. And to get started, we have our carrots, the main dish. And then we've got some apples, as well as some onions, some salt, some pepper, some bread, and we've got some ginger and some garlic. And the herbs, they have some fresh parsley and some dania, coriander, and I'll see which ones I'll use to, towards the end. I'll decide on that. So those are the main ingredients we're using. So like the name suggests, it's pretty much exactly as it is. It's carrots, some apples, some ginger, and then you just throw in some onions. So it's very simple, nothing too over the top. Just maybe the combination sounds a bit different and a bit strange to you. But that's what we're going to be making. So we're going to go on a short little break. And when we come back, we're going to get started, start chopping and start making the soup. So see you in a little while. Welcome back to Lunch Guide. I'm your host and chef, Shina Amario. Now today we're going to be making a carrot apple ginger soup. Thank you so much for tuning in. And for the soup, like I mentioned, it's as the ingredients are carrots, some apple and some ginger. Those are the main ingredients of the dish. Now to get started, I went right ahead here and um, just peeled off a few of my carrots. Now I always say at home, if you don't have a peeler, it's probably a good um, tip that you should, you should probably get one because it saves you so much time and you waste so little and you see with the peeling all you have to do is um get your peeler get your carrots you can also use this with um a potato or a cucumber as i like to do as well and then you just peel it and you see you get such little wastage so that's just one of those gadgets that won't sit in your house trust me you'll probably need it so you could just go out and um, get one of course you can use a knife but if your skills are not that great, I mean, as much as I'm a chef, I'll admit my peeling skills with a knife, especially for carrots, are not the best. And you see the wastage you get, I mean, you really can't beat a peeler. It's such little wastage. So it's just one of those things you might want to go out and just grab one. And they're not that expensive either. They come in all shapes and sizes. You could just grab one to help you out. Okay, so that's our wastage. You're going to place this aside. And then for my carrots, I'm just going to place this aside and get my onion. I'm going to go ahead and start my pan off here. Now, this is a good soup um, if you are within Nairobi or somewhere that it's cold, like anywhere. Most times, like in Nairobi, as we know, it's not always, we always have the sun out. But once in a while, yes, once in a while, it will get a bit breezy and it will rain here and there, it will get a bit cloudy. So this is one of those soups you could take to work for lunch. So I'm just um, putting on my stove. Okay, so I'm going to put in some olive oil and then just let that heat up. And then now I'm going to go ahead and just continue with my chopping. So I'm adding an onion um, to the mixture of the carrot, apple, ginger, like I mentioned, to the soup. So we're going to start off with our carrots. The carrot here is kind of like the base. So I'm just slicing this up. And then remember, this, depending how you slice this up, you're going to blend it up anyway. Though you could choose to just have your soup. Now there's actually some water in my pan. That's why you're feeling the sizzle is a bit on the high side. So I'm just going to reduce that. Yeah, and then get my wooden spoon for stirring. And then just give this a stir. So while that's going on, in the meantime, I'm going to get my carrots. Actually, I'm going to get my... That's what I'll be putting next. My garlic. So the garlic is just a little garlic. If you don't like garlic, you don't have to use the garlic. But I always love garlic. So I'm choosing to use it. So go ahead and just peel it. 
So this is one of those um, soups that definitely will keep you warm when it's cold. And sometimes it just gets a little cold. You kind of want to keep warm. So this soup will definitely help you out. And especially if you have something like a cold, the ginger will definitely ease that through with your throat. So the ginger here isn't something that's a little, it's to be tasted. So this is the garlic, we're adding the garlic and then we'll go ahead and um, chop some of the ginger. Then give this a stir. Again, if you feel your heat is too high, you can always uh, reduce it. So just reduce your heat, give that a stir until the garlic is nice and aromatic. Now, I love having soups every now and then, not all the time, every now and then. I'm just slicing off some of my ginger here. And then, usually you could peel this um, with a knife, but I find sometimes even an easier way to do this is uh, you could just get a spoon. And then all you do with the spoon is just grab it and then peel it all the way through. And you use such little, um, you waste such little skin, as well as there's no hazard to your hands because there's nothing directly um, facing you like a knife. So this is just a good tip and it's fast as well. It doesn't take a long time and you get all the skin off. So you see that? Your ginger is nice and clean and it's not much wastage. So for this, I'll just slice this part off because I'm not going to be using that. And a bit of the tip there. And that's what your ginger looks like. See, very simple. So that's what happens when you use um, the spoon instead of like a knife. Just stir your onions and ginger mix, and garlic mix, sorry. Okay, so now take away your waste, and just throw this. Okay, so for this, I'm just going to give this um, a chop as well. Actually, a slice, I'm going to just slice this, because like I've mentioned, I'm going to end up blending this anyway. And the ginger here, it's meant to be something that you can taste at the back of your throat because it is a carrot apple ginger soap so the ginger is not something mild so you want to go a bit heavy on the ginger but if you don't like ginger then you don't have to use it then just discard that then give this a stir now already i can smell the garlic so I'm just going to stir this until i can smell also the ginger in the meantime i'm going to be chopping my other vegetables which in this case is just my carrots. Now something else you could use instead of, um, let's say the onions, you could use leeks. Now leeks act, act as a good substitute if you don't have onions, because they're also in the onions family. So for this, I'm just chopping this up, just slicing this. So the leeks, yes, like I was saying earlier, it's a good alternative, especially if you don't have onions, and I like the flavor of the leeks as well. They're not usually too strong. And they're also easily accessible to your, in your market. So just slice your carrots, um, whichever shape you'd like to. You could cut them into cubes, into slices like I've done, round rings like these ones, and then just throw them in. And then give this a nice stir. And then we're going to cover that. I'm going to add just a little bit of water and then just cover it before I add my apples. So that the onion, the garlic, can, I mean, not the garlic, the carrots can start to soften up. So just give that a stir. Then we're going to season it a bit later when we add everything else. So for the apple, the reason I'm using an apple here is just because the apple will give a nice sweetness to your soup. Now you could definitely just have your soup at this stage with just as it is, the carrots and uh, the onions or leeks if you're using some and the ginger and the garlic. And that's a really good, hot, healthy soup, heavy, if you decide to have it um, on the heavy side, that is um, if you want it like not very smooth, then you'll not add so much water. So it's going to be nice and thick. That's what I mean by heavy. But because I want some, to add some nice sweetness to it and just make my soup different, because probably out there at home, you're probably used to having your soup already with the carrots, you probably know how to do that. So that's why I'm adding just something different. Again, to just inspire you to just want to make your food differently, cook your food differently. So add your apples. And the apple I'm using here is actually the 
pink lady apple now personally i like the pink lady apple just because it has that sweetness to it that tanginess to it that's not too tangy and not too sweet like the red apple so it's right in between the tangy one is usually the green one and then the sweet one is usually the red one and this tends to just be right there in between so that's what we're going to use and most times you can tell because of the skin the color the way it looks it has like both shades of the green going on as well as the red but it's more of like a pinkish hue um, lime green hue and that's what usually that's how you're able to tell the difference and most times it tends to be like crispier in taste so i'm just going to go ahead and uh, slice this now i love apples in my soup because something else you could use this in is something like um pumpkin you could add some apples in pumpkin if you're making like a pumpkin soup uh butternut squash you could definitely add some apples Another fruit, if you didn't want to add apples, maybe you're allergic to apples or you just don't like the taste of apples, you could add pears. That would be a good combination for this. So it would be now a carrot pear soup. And of course, you could definitely now add it to other vegetables. Like I've mentioned personally, I like adding apples to like butternut squash or pumpkin. So if you are using pears, you'd add the same thing. You could add now to the butternut squash some pears or to the pumpkin. So once you've chopped this, we're just going to go ahead and add it to our carrots. So adding fruits to your vegetables, it's just a good way to, again, eat your fruits, find ways to combine uh, your food that's different so, that to, so as to give it a different taste. That's all this is. I'm all, always all about giving your food a different taste that you're not used to. So like I've mentioned, the sweetness from the apples is going to come right through so we're going to season this and most times for soup you kind of want to um, season it uh, generously because there's no other seasoning that's going in there unless you're using like um, some herbs or if you're using like um, pre-made stock like vegetable stock or some chicken or beef stock if, if you're vegetarian then definitely should use a vegetable stock but if you are a meat lover and you want to infuse some chicken flavors in there and some beef flavors then use a beef stock and to make stock, it's uh, pretty simple. You could actually buy just the store-bought one, or you could make some from scratch. And if you are making it, all you'll need is just some bones, some chicken bones or some beef bones. And then to that, you'll add some onions, some water, and some celery. And then just stir that up, some carrots, add your water, and let that simmer for about an hour. And that liquid that you get, you get is what you'll now add in here. So it's not very complicated. All you require is just bones. But if you're baking vegetables, then all you'd require is uh, the carrots, some celery, and some onions or leeks. And that's pretty much your base. And then just add water to that. Something else you could add is uh, bay leaves if you wanted. So now that I've added my apples and I've seasoned the mixture, I'm going to go ahead now and add some water. Just enough water to cover the mix, which is the mix of the apples and the carrots and of course the ginger and garlic and onion. So give this a stir. Now I can bring up my heat so that this can come to a boiling point. This is very simple. Very simple cooking is what I'm going to call it. Okay. And then we're going to cover this. And then one of the things, again, when you're making soup, you kind of want to taste it uh, a little bit later once the water comes to a boiling point because what happens is... When you taste it at this stage, the water hasn't had time to mix in with the other flavors and combine very well. But once it comes to a boiling point, then it's had the time to mix in with everything else in there. And you're able to tell right off with the seasoning what's missing. Because at this stage, if you tasted it, maybe you might feel like you're missing some salt because everything hasn't combined. And again, the sweetness from the apples and the carrots is going to come off. So you need to just be patient, wait a little bit. Once it comes to a boiling point, then taste it. So next we're going to toast our bread. So for the soup I'm plating it with bread, that's what we're going to be having it with. But if you didn't want bread, you could definitely omit the bread and leave it all out and just have it as plain soup. But if you want some carbs in there for some energy in the cold weather, then definitely add some bread. Or something else you could add, um, especially bring from Kenya, which is something that we make a lot, is chapati. So you could make some chapati and have it with your soup. Um, in India, you could make some roti, something like that. So just make it work with wherever you're from and what you mostly have as your starch with soup. So I'm going to go ahead and get my pan now for my bread. 
And for the pan, I want to heat it up and add some oil. And for that, I want to transfer this to the other side. This always gives me a headache sometimes. There we are. <laughs> Just a minute. Okay, there we are. And then just hold on until it, um, it splits. Okay, there we go. Then we can reduce the heat a little bit. Okay, so for the bread, all I'm going to do is toast my bread in there with some olive oil. So I'm going to add some oil in the pan. Now I love olive oil, you could definitely use some butter if you wanted to. Like I've said, I'm trying to keep this on the lighter side. So which is why I'm not using any other additions. So that it's something that you can easily do at home. So you have no excuse of not being able to do it because it's something that's easily doable. So no extra ingredients. You could use bread if you wanted to. You could decide not to use it. You could make it chapati if that's what you have at hand. So again, make it work for you. So just get your bread, regular bread, and then we're going to go ahead and toss it. So swirl that around and then go ahead and place your bread. So the bread is going to soak up all that oil. You can see the bubbles, so you know your pan is hot. So that's what the bread is going to do. It's going to soak it up and then it's going to give it a nice brownish color. My soup is already boiling, so I'm going to reduce the heat here and give it a stir and taste. Like I mentioned, this is the time you want to actually taste your soup. So open that up and then give it a stir. Now this is a good way to really try your soup with the fruits because if you don't like your vegetables very strong then you're likely to like this because of the sweetness it's not going to be very savory it's a bit mixed savory and sweet so just give this a taste because it's hot I have to blow it <laughs> oh the apples the apples bring this nice sweetness to the soup which is what you want with the apples like i said they give the natural sweetness and um, the pepper, you can feel the pepper right off from the back and the ginger. The ginger, the more it sits in the soup, it's going to release its flavors. So again, we're going to let this, the seasoning right now feels fine. And again, I don't want to over season at this stage because once I blend, everything is going to come together. So you definitely don't want to over season. So go ahead and just cover this and reduce the heat. And we're going to sieve out this for about 15 or so minutes. If you had a larger pot, then you'll do it for about 20 minutes or until all the vegetables are soft. So just make sure your heat is uh, simmered to the lowest as possible, which mine is. And then go ahead, melt your bread and have a look. Let's hope it hasn't burnt while I was busy talking to you guys. No, not yet. So there we are. We're going to give that some time until it's nice and brown. So about another minute or so on that side. And once it's ready, we're going to set it aside. So that's it guys for our soup. It's something very simple as you can see. So we're going to go on a short break so that when you come back, we'll be blending our soup. It will be ready by then. Like I've said, you want to give it about 15 minutes or so so that all the vegetables and the fruits in there can soften and release their natural flavors and juices. Then now you can blend it. If you're making a bigger batch or a larger batch, then something like 20 to 30 minutes is what you're looking at so that everything can have the time to soften and cook so that's our carrots and apple ginger soup we're going to go on a short break and when we come back we're going to continue where we left off Welcome back to Lunch Guide. I'm your host and chef, Shina Mario. Now, if you're just tuning in, today we're actually making a carrot apple ginger soup. And I mentioned earlier, it is like the name suggests, there's carrots, there's apples, and there's ginger in the soup. Now, the soup has actually been simmering on very low heat for about 15 minutes. And that's what you have. The vegetables are nice and soft. Now, for your vegetables to be soft, you kind of want to make sure that um, your knife or fork can pierce right through them. So when you pick out your fork, it can pierce straight through it. 
it's not like too tough and that's what you and you can tell that you see it breaks um easily so once it gets to that stage of your apples and your carrots they definitely want to blend now um during break i added some stalks these are stalks of the stalks is what i'm talking about these are stalks of coriander leaves and this is actually a good soup or any soup that you're making when you don't know what to do with um like coriander stalks or something like parsley stalks you just add them right in so something like this if you don't know what to do with it you just add it in your soup so sometimes if you have a lot of it you don't have to waste it you could definitely always find a purpose or use for it so that's what i like to do i like to add them to my soups so it's just an example to show you and then it really just cooks right through so that's one of those things that you actually don't waste because it cooks right through but for this we're just going to blend so just for demonstration purposes <laughs> or to mention what i did during the break okay so my soup uh, now is ready for me to blend it and for the bread if you're just tuning in all i did with my bread is just uh, toast it and now it's well and toasted you can actually see that it's nice and crispy and a bit um hard so actually as i wait for this to just cool slightly what i'm going to do is actually cut off the edges just so that it can look a little bit neater so we're going to go ahead and just cut off the edges you can definitely retain them this is just like a preference thing and then something you could also add now you could finish it off with some more olive oil if you wanted to you could um scrape some garlic onto it if you wanted to this is entirely optional you kind of don't have to do it if you don't like the taste of garlic then you don't have to do that so you just get your bread and then on whichever side is like the hardest then just scrape some garlic now what this does is actually give your bread a nice uh, garlic aroma without it being all like in your mouth taste. So it's not very strong, it's just very light, like a hint. So that way you have the garlic aroma from the bread. Once you taste the bread, you'll be like, hmm, something tastes different, but you're just not quite sure what it is. So I always like to play around with my food in that sense, just to add just more flavors and depth to whatever you make. So I'm just rubbing against some of the garlic and you can tell as you rub, it starts to shrink. So it just starts to reduce in size. As you rub it, you can actually tell. You see what, what I'm rubbing? It's actually, again, shrunk in size from where it was. So a little goes a long way. So then just slice off the other edges. Now you could resolve with some olive oil, like I mentioned, if you wanted to, entirely optional. And then you could cut this however you want. So I'm just going to cut them into halves. You could cut it into diagonal then cut another diagonal if you want to just make it your own so get your bread here and we're just going to place this um, on our board so just like that so that everything is um, visible to the eye on that side where you can see everything nice and visible make a drizzle some oil onto this if you wanted to like a mission that will just make sure that the garlic actually flavors set in more into your bread you could also sprinkle some herbs so we're going to go ahead now to the soup now if you have the time in your house definitely i would recommend <laughs> that you give your soup some good amount of time to definitely cool off but if you don't have the time then just uh, give it a swirl and make sure that you're very careful when you're blending it so I'm going to go ahead now and just add my vegetable soup, which is now my carrots. And the fruits here are the apples. And then just to make sure that everything is in there, just going to get my spoon. And just scrape everything in. Kind of don't want to waste anything. There you go. And then we're going to go ahead now and just blend the soup so once you've added that in make sure it's uh, resting well you could add a bit more liquid once you see what the consistency is like I feel with mine I might need to add a bit more liquid but I'm going to blend it first and then have a look and see so for this again it's very important to ensure if you're blending something hot that you give it a good support because it is going to want to pressure up because of all the steam that's building inside in fact for that let me put it directly and then once you've um, set it everything is secure 
Then we're going to now pulse gently. So like I said, I could tell I was, go I was going to need to add some liquid in here, which is why I always, because at this stage, it's kind of more of a pulse. It's a more of like a puree. You don't want it to be a puree. If you are serving this as a puree, this is perfect. But since I'm serving it as a soup, I'm going to add some liquid. It's always good that I always have my liquid always extra and standby. So that's good enough, a good amount. And we're going to blend this. And then cover it. And then again, remember to be supportive because the liquid is hot so because of pressure. So this to me is looking good. It's looking a good consistency. Like I want my soup. I don't want my soup very light. Place that on the side, then get your spoon and have a look. Yes, so this is looking good. You can see that. And then again, if you wanted to have your soup on the lighter side, you could sieve this. But I like my soup with everything in there. I like to taste everything. So I want it like slightly chunky-ish. Oh, the apple in here, the sweetness it brings. Oof, and the ginger, you can actually feel it. And that's what I was talking about earlier, that the ginger comes right off. So this is what our soup looks like. So I'm going to go ahead, because um, at this stage, I don't feel like it doesn't need anything extra. It doesn't need any salt, nothing extra. But if you did feel it needed something extra, always get your pan and then preheat it. And then once it comes um, to a boiling point, just to get it hot, add some salt and some pepper. That way it will blend much better that way. But for mine, I'm going to go right ahead and plate it. So just pour your soup. And you see the consistency I'm talking about. It's not too thick, it's not too light, and it's still hot. But if you felt you needed to add some salt, some pepper, you definitely want to make sure you add it inside your pan. And then reheat it. And then once it's reheated, season it, and then it's good to be served. So this is looking good as it is. So to finish it off, I'm going to sprinkle it with some herbs and of course some olive oil. Just because I used olive oil um, earlier, this will just give it a little nice drizzle and it will just make it look pretty. And we're going to get some herbs and I'm going to opt to use um, parsley. Like I said, I have parsley and dania. So I'll just sprinkle it with some parsley just want to clear up some space here, just to chop some of my herbs. Because we're going to sprinkle some of this on top. So this is a very simple soup that you could have when it's cold. As you can see, it's a no-brainer soup. It doesn't require so much time, such little time, such few ingredients. It's kind of like there's no excuse not to make it because it requires such little effort on your end. And we could also sprinkle on the bread, like I said earlier. You wanted to sprinkle some herbs on your bread, you could just do that. There you go. And that's it. And just so that you know that it had apples in it, in case you're a bit lost, you could be like, oh, I don't remember what it had inside. So the apple is just like a good um, little extra decoration thing you could use too. You could just place it there, just so you remember those a slice of apple in the soup. So that's it guys for our soup today. It was our carrot ginger apple soup. Very simple to make, all ingredients are easy to find, just the combination of the flavors. It's very nice and sweet and savory, and the ginger gives it a kick right off your throat. If you didn't want to use ginger, you could use some chili, but the ginger is nice and subtle because it's not going to be right off spicy. So it's just something you want to try out at home. And I really do hope I encourage you to cook at home because that's what I want to know, whether you're cooking at home, whether you're trying out the recipes, because I'm happy to share them with you always. So this has been Lunch Guide. I have been your host and chef, Shina Amario. Until then, I'll see you next time. And be sure to follow us on Brand Plus TV on Facebook and we can interact some more. Bye.